Okay, so I'm going to talk about um, bounded exhaustive testing um, on GPUs. This is joint work with um, Ahmed uh, Selik uh, Shripati Pai, who is now at the uh, University of Rochester, and uh, Milos Gligoric, who supervises Ahmed. Sorry, it's a big jump. <laughs> so um, this talk is about uh, bounded exhaustive testing. We got an introduction to that in the um, in Talia's talk in the first uh, talk of the session. And um, specifically uh, in this approach, which is a test automation approach, um, we create test uh, suites using constraints that are given by the user, and the constraints define or capture key properties of desired test inputs. Um, the idea is to test the code against all inputs that are non-equivalent and within some um, size bound that's also given by the user. And uh, the basic inspiration comes from the small scope hypothesis that uh, hypothesizes that you can find many bugs by testing against uh, many small examples. Um, and this approach brings the spirit of traditional model checking uh, to code specifically to programs that operate on uh, structurally complex uh, inputs. And uh, this technique has been applied in many contexts in academia and industry to find bugs in a number of software applications, including um, program analysis engines, compilers, um, web services, web browsers, and uh, so forth. The idea was introduced by um, the Testera framework and later refined by the Korat framework, which is uh, the basis of our work in this uh, talk. And our overarching goal is to scale bounded exhaustive testing to create inputs of larger size so we can have more confidence and also find bugs that cannot be found using uh, smaller inputs. So here's a little bit of background on Korat, which is the foundation of this work. Uh, one of the key ideas in Korat was to allow the user to write constraints in Java. So they don't have to learn a new language, and we saw that motivation uh, in the first talk as well, that developers are not keen on learning new languages. And um, in Korat, uh, you can write the constraints in Java, and you can also provide the bound on the size of in Java as a finitization method. And that's the input that Korat gets. And as an output, it produces all inputs um, which are within the bound such that the given constraint is satisfied. The constraint is written as a Java repo k method. We term them repo k following uh, Skov's terminology. And um, it, you could um, use a simple exhaustive search to create all such inputs by running repo k against every possible candidate input and checking which ones are uh, valid. However, these uh, spaces, even for small bounds on sizes, are very, very large and cannot be uh, explored in such naive, exhaustive way. So what Korat does is it uh, uses pruning, implements a backtracking search, which does very efficient pruning by monitoring fields of um, uh, objects, uh, which are inputs and are accessed during repo -okay executions. So it tries to reason about why certain input is not valid and uses that reasoning to the next candidate input. And it also explores only non-isomorphic structures, which means it creates only non-equivalent tests. So in this specific talk, we take Korat essentially to the GPUs. And this is the first work on bounded exhaustive testing context of using GPUs. And thanks to Ali, you also heard about GPUs in the previous talk. Um, so in this particular case, we are distributing the Korat search um, for modern GPUs. There are um, two lines of previous work that uh, uh, distributed the Korat search in the context of clusters of uh, commodity machines based on CPUs. Specifically, the parallel path of ranging the Korat search to partition this piece of input, having many work for disjoint parts of the exploration space. Um, more recent work on P Korat used a work list based technique, which is the foundation of how we take Korat to the GPUs in this work. So uh, we make a two-fold contribution. One is that we introduce an approach where the predicates are written on an abstract encoding, so that the rep k, even though it's originally written to work on object graphs, now is rewritten to work on integer arrays which makes it more suitable for execution on the GPU architecture. And we also introduce a suite of optimizations which are specifically designed for GPUs. And as a result, we can uh, create larger inputs and our technique provides substantial speed up in the GPU as well as speed ups even if you use the approach simply in a sequential setting using a CPU. 
So I will next give an example to illustrate some of the uh, basic insights uh, that provided the foundation for our work. So here is a binary search tree declaration. Each tree has a root and caches the number of nodes in the size field. Each node has an integer element and a left and a right child. Assume that we want to test this method remove. It takes two inputs. One is the object on which you invoke it. The other is the integer parameter. In order to create any valid input for this method, you must satisfy the class invariant of binary search tree. And that class invariant would typically include things like acyclicity, size having the correct field, and search constraints being satisfied on the tree structure. So the precondition in this case is the class invariant, and we would like to be able to create inputs such as the following one. Here's an example of a valid binary search tree with three nodes which have the values two, one, and three in the correct search order. Some input which is not legal in terms of satisfying the precondition for this remove method is the following one. In this case, you don't have a valid tree because there is sharing of nodes along left and right. Internally, the standard Corat search represents candidate inputs using a vector of integer indices for efficient backtracking. It then translates a candidate vector to a Java object graph and runs the repo K method on that. This is some insight that we are going to also use for GPUs. So here's an illustration of how you can encode an object graph using an, um, a vector of integer indices. So let's say you want to create tests with up to three nodes. So we have a tree object. The tree has two fields, root and size, and each of the nodes have three fields, info, left, and right. So here is a candidate vector that has 11 elements, one corresponding to each object field of interest. Since we have a bound of three, the size can take one of four possible values, zero, one, two, and three. The integer elements can take uh, one of three possible values. Let's say we are creating all trees that use the elements one, two, and three. And then each of the reference fields can take one of these four possible values, null, or point to one of the nodes. So if you consider the small state space, it already has over a million candidates, and if you these and to even a slightly larger number, the there is state space explosion. So here is how you can write a constraint in Java. So this is what the user writes if you want to create these trees. The user writes a check. The check simply inspects the given input and observes its properties and returns false if any property such as acyclicity is violated or if all the properties are satisfied, it returns true. This specific implementation uses a simple work list based algorithm for graph traversal and keeps track of the nodes that have already been seen in a set of visited nodes. And if ever the search encounters a node that's added to the same set, to the set again, then it returns false because that indicates sharing, for example. While this check is easy to write, if you think about executing such checks many, many times, which Karad does, on a GPU architecture, these checks are not very efficient. They require dynamic data structures, and they're also using expressive but expensive for GPUs libraries, such as the Java util libraries being used over here. So here's an illustration of the basic core art search, how it backtracks. And um, the idea is that let's say you are running this repo K on a faulty input. So here's the candidate structure, which is not a valid tree. So Corat is going to monitor the field accesses that repo K is going to make and use them as a basis of creating the next candidate. So if you observe the field accesses in repo K, the first field that's accessed is root. And Corat will keep track of what field was accessed. And the next field that's accessed is the left of N0. Everything is fine so far. And repo K continues to execute. And then um, repo K uh, accesses n zero dot right. At this point, sharing is detected and repo k returns false. And then for systematic search, Karat is going to backtrack on the last accessed field. And here is how it gets pruning. So here is the candidate vector representation and the corresponding data structure. The last field accessed was n zero right, so Karat is going to try the next value for this field, which according to the domains we define for possible field values is n two. So that field gets the value N2, you get this resulting structure, 
And in this case, in one step, we get a valid tree. The key thing to observe here is that in this one step, the following candidates have been pruned from search. There is no need to check any candidate that has n0 as root and n1 as both the left and right child of n0. It does not matter what the fields these fields have as values. You can put any value here. This thing is still going to return false, assuming, of course, deterministic execution of repo k. And this also shares some similarities with what Ali was presenting in terms of test input generation <laughs> modulo inputs. So here is how pcorath does distribution and provides a foundation for GPU corath. So in this case, the basic issue with the standard corath search is that pruning depends on the last candidate explored. And it's not straightforward to predict how the pruning is going to happen. So unless you have actually inspected a candidate, you don't know what the next candidate you should explore. And if you a priori distribute the search, many workers will be exploring parts of the state space that would simply be pruned. So in p the idea is to use a work list and allow each worker to do a little bit of work and then to create a set of work items that you know that the standard Karat search is definitely going to explore. So in this case, here is a graph that shows uh, how 63 candidates are explored by uh, Karat, and they are numbered based on the order in which the sequential Karat search would explore them. What happens in P Karat is that by exploring just one candidate, P Karat figures out that these nine candidates are definitely going to be explored in future by the Karat search. So I'll add them to a work list and let whichever worker becomes available, explore them, and myself pick up another candidate from the work list. So pcorath runs the standard Karat algorithm, works well on CPUs, but it also does dynamic object allocation, works with object graphs, uses libraries, also requires unbounded work lists, which are not good for GPUs. And if you apply this algorithm straight on the GPU, you get a slowdown on the Kepler K80 and a very small speed up on the GTX 1080 from NVIDIA. So the key ideas of int Karat are that we are going to encode data structures as ragged candidate matrices, which are a slight variation of the candidate vectors that the original Karat search uses. The key idea is we are going to remove from repo k executions, as well as the Karat implementation, all uses of complex data structures. Instead, we are going to do all operations on integer arrays of fixed lengths that are predefined. And um, we also introduce the use of uh, special containers, for example, bit sets, which uh, remove the need to use uh, libraries such as um, Q and set implementations from the standard libraries. Um, we also adapt the work list algorithm from P Karat to overcome the lack of or restriction of virtual memory in GPUs. Um, specifically, each GPU has two work lists, and the GPU and the host CPU architecture use a combined, um, use an overflow buffer where the host can store the work list candidates that would not fit uh, on the um, uh, fixed size GPU work list. And then we define <coughs> another four optimizations to further speed up uh, the search. So um, here are the, here is the level one optimization where the basic idea is that we want to remove all dynamic memory allocation from the search. So this is the basic Karat search, the implementation of that. And uh, there are a couple of places where Karat allocates memory. For example, it needs to allocate the candidate vector. It also needs to allocate objects for field values uh, domains. So what we do is we use the basic observation, then once you define a finitization, that bounds the input size. And that bound is known before the search starts. And what you can do is you can use that bound to pre-allocate um, arrays, integer arrays, appropriate sizes. And if we simply do this optimization, we get a 2.1x uh, speed up on average across all sizes for binary tree. The level two optimization uses a similar idea, but in the context of the predicate repo case executions. And that predicate really represents hot code because it's typically executed millions and millions of times. And uh, one thing the repo K needs to allocate memory is in terms of allocating local containers. And so we um, use pre-allocation in this case as well, similar to the previous optimization. And this one, because of the number of times the repo K executes, gives uh, about a 25x speed up 
which is cumulative, so level two and is applied together with level one. And um, for level three, we basically utilize the GPU memory structure for fast accesses. And in this case, we keep, now use the constant memory for field value domains, which are uh, fixed across all the threads. And then we use local memory, thread local memory for local containers that are used uh, by each thread. So this uh, provides about a 57x uh, speed up on that example. Again, this is cumulative with the previous two optimizations. In level four, we use some standard well-known operator transformations to change, for example, the modular operation that the Quarat search does in order to backtrack and or to create the next candidate by, and we replace the modular operations which are not so effective on GPUs by sequences of additions and subtractions. Similarly, we use uh, bit sets and bit operations instead of integer arrays for keeping track of uh, visited sets of nodes. And this uh, gives a slightly more speed up uh, in comparison with the level three. Um, so just to give you a bit of an idea of the implementation and evaluation, uh, we implemented for Java, C, as well as CUDA. So in Java and C, we have a sequential implementation which uses this uh, encoding and executions over integer arrays rather than object graphs. Uh, for GPUs, we have the encoding, the work list, as well as the, all the optimizations that we uh, described. And we consider two variations of the search. One is the Quarat search, which uses pruning for um, faster search. And the other is simply naive search. If you want to explore literally every candidate, you wanted to see like uh, whether GPUs provide much benefit in that case. So uh, here are um, some numbers on the specific um, uh, GPUs we were using. Uh, for this uh, CPU host, we had an uh, Intel i7, and uh, then we had an NVIDIA GTX 1080, uh, as well as uh, a K80, and in the paper, there are a couple more uh, GPUs that we uh, talk about. So um, both of the ones uh, shown here, uh, so one of them had uh, 1080, has um, 20 uh, streaming multiprocessors, and the K80 has 13, and each of them has about 2048 threads per um, uh, SM. So for subjects, we use um, previously used um, subjects, uh, seven data structure subjects, and um, the tables here give you some description of the input sizes, and we will create all inputs up to the size. And some other numbers which are important are, so this column here shows the number of that the Quarat search explores after pruning. So these are not the sizes of the state spaces. These are a very, very tiny fraction of the sizes of the underlying state spaces. And even these numbers can be quite large. And of these which are explored, these are the ones that are used as valid. Um, <clears throat> so here are some um, results. I'll quickly go over a, a few of these and then the paper has more details on more research questions. So if we disable pruning, here are the speed ups that the GPUs uh, provide. Uh, in some cases, except um, for the heap array, we see that for a larger size, there's a larger speed up. But what you can notice is that these sizes are not that large because the naive search simply cannot scale. So with the pruning, here are the numbers. And in this case, uh, the GPUs are also providing uh, quite a bit of uh, speed up. And in all cases, except single link lists in which the number explored is actually quite small. And uh, we also observe that as uh, uh, the size increases, speed up sometimes decreases or stays essentially uh, the same. Um, so I'm gonna skip over some of the remaining uh, results. And uh, hopefully uh, you'll be tempted to read the, for the details in the paper. So overall, uh, we introduced the uh, first approach for systematic testing in the context of GPUs. Our focus was Korath, and we brought Korath to the GPUs, building on previous pre-Korath, and um, we get, get um, a speed of about 17x over standard Korath in the cases that we looked at. And uh, we believe GPUs have uh, an important role uh, in scaling systematic testing and uh, hopefully other techniques will also be make use, able to make use of them. Thank you.